Hello and welcome. Today I'm joined by the one and only Gordon Hill, one of Manchester United's greatest ever wingers and a fan's favourite, a huge fan's favourite from the great Tommy Doherty era. Not just a goal maker, Gordon was a brilliant goal scorer too. We called him Merlin because of his magical skills. Gordon was the wild card in Tommy Doherty's swashbuckling side of the 1970s. The player who often unlocked matches with something extra special. It was funny, but they knew you as that. Today, Gordon is a UEFA licensed coach, owner of United Sports, a school of excellence over in the United States, from where he joins us now. Gordon, we've got plenty to talk about, and we all want to hear your thoughts about Eric Ten Hag. But first, I'd like to ask you about the modern day winger. How do you compare the likes of Anthony, Rashford and Sancho to the players that you used to play with and against back in your day? Well, to be perfectly honest with John, that the, 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 this so-called, the winger's been a, an, a word that's been banded around at non-wingers and overlapping defenders and bits and pieces. And now we're calling it a, another word, inverted winger. Um, that's the player, that's a winger coming in from the right to the, to the left and the left to the right. I laugh at it, John, because we used to be able to do that in training when we used to be able to change places, Steve Coppola and myself. Steve, he'd come over, I would go over to him. We tried it in games when we knew that we possibly could get an advantage against the defenders. So when they come up with this, these new so-called positions, I, I honestly, I just laugh and, you know, and do, well, it's a smile because you're never going to kill the, 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 the winger. The winger is very much a very valuable point, part of a team. And unfortunately, that they've come up with new te the terminology, not technology, terminology, inside or outside, go down, clip the ball in, has been the old-fashioned winger. We say old-fashioned, but it's still a, it, it, it's a, it's fashion and it will stay in football forever. So for me, I chuckle at it. Do I see the, the comparisons with what Anthony's doing? And, you know, Rashford's not a winger. Um, Anthony's on the wrong side. Granacho has got to go to the right side. Whoever they've got going on that right, they've got to be able to put the ball in the danger area for the centre forward. They've got this Danish centre forward. Now start feeding him. But you've got to feed him with the right balls and not, not just keep coming inside and trying to shoot. You've got to feed him because every time I've seen him, he looks frustrated. Absolutely. So really, we could do with a modern day Gordon Hill and Stevie Coppola, couldn't we? That's the way I see it as a fan and I think many people do because there's no point in having this great new striker if, as you say, he's not getting the service. Well, it's the same old story. If you, you know, if you don't service the centre forward, he's never going to score. I mean... You take, for instance, City's Hala. He gets service. And he gets service when he doesn't want the service. But he's still getting those chances. I don't think we are giving our centre forward the chances. I really don't. And and that's frustrating because there's nothing more um, a joy to watch is a, a winger going, taking the defender on and then whipping the ball in. So let's talk now about Eric Ten Hag. I know you follow our football club very closely and I enjoy reading your comments on Twitter. One thing many viewers won't know, though, is that you're, you first met Eric Ten Hag in your days playing for a Dutch club, FC Twente. Tell us about your first memories of Ten Hag and why you think he's such a strict disciplinarian. When I went to Twente, we used to train morning and afternoons. We had the pros that were full-time players were training in the morning and then the part-time players that went to work in the morning came in the afternoon and Eric was a young player in 20 and uh, uh, the, the, there was there was quite a few of them that were decent players that were coming through and learning. I know for a fact that um, the, 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 they wanted, uh, the, the discipline in the Dutch game was very much, you know, as we've seen over the years, the players that they've developed and come through have been very much very well-disciplined players. Uh, Dutch football is disciplined. And I think Eric has, has taken what he's learned. He's gone on. He's got the situation at Ajax. He's put that into place. But he's not had players that have stood up to him. 
And I think what's happening now is that players are standing up to Eric. They're questioning why they're doing certain things. And I think that's where, that's where you know, he, he's now, he's in a quandrum at the moment. He doesn't know whether to come or go because he's made decisions thinking it's going to be great. But then unfortunately, they haven't worked out for him. So now he's got to operate with another strategy to how does he get the best out of his players. You're not talking about players on 20,000 a year. You're talking about players are on a couple of million and will answer back if it's not working right. So I think that's a big jump for him because in uh, I think at Ajax, you played for Ajax because it was Ajax, but at the top of the Dutch. Now you're changing, you know, now he's got this situation at United where, wow, this is the biggest club. And he's now got to, he's now got to like put it, put up and show people that what he did at Ajax is what he's doing, what he can do now. And I think that's the discipline that we were all talking about with players having the upper hand where manager gets a two-year contract, they get a four-year contract or an eight-year contract, which, you know, they don't care. And I think that's when it comes down to it. They, they don't care. Well, they care, but they don't care enough. You know, it doesn't matter if I don't play. I'm I'm getting two hundred grand a week. You know, it it doesn't hurt them as much when it's in their pocket. As I've heard you say, Gordon, today and on previous occasions, the big difference between being manager of Ajax and being manager of Manchester United, Man United fans would say the biggest club in the world. The big question really now, though, is how long do you think Eric Ten Hag's going to get to finish the job? Do you think he's running out of time? Do you think he's going to get more time? I I would give him more time. I would question what he's doing, but I, I don't think I would change it immediately. I would, I, I, it's a much deeper than just saying, okay, let's get rid of him, pay him off 20, 30 million, which goes out the coffers again. And then let's get somebody else in who may not like what he's got. We saw Ollie's, Ollie's squad ripped to pieces. We've seen, um, Eric come in and put what he wishes and what he thinks is going to be the new United. He's gone out and had a look at the marketplace and gone for players, whether they're right or wrong or players that we should have got or we didn't get. And now he's got his, now he's got his squad and, you know, every, every manager, oh, we're injured and we've got this and that. that that's an excuse, John. These players that you're buying and the squad you've got of maybe 24 players should all be ready to step into that first team and be able to produce it. Why? Because that keeps the others on their toes that are in the first team. And if you don't play well enough, I want that position. And, you know, not, not my days was 11 and one sub, but we did, we, we love Dave McCreary and the subs, and everything else but we didn't want them to come on and replace us. So you played your heart out. I think sometimes it's, it's quite easy to say, I'm injured, thanks very much, take me off. If somebody took me off in the cup final, they took me off, I think it was about eight, nine minutes to go. I was absolutely livid because normally you, you get subbed towards the, the end of the game. I got subbed there and I went, oh my God, you know, and it's like heartbreak. Now they're coming off 60 minutes, you know, 55, subbing at half time. And I'm scratching my head going, what, what's happening? You know, trying to change the system or the tactics that you've got to try and win that game. And I think that's, that's another bit. You've got a bigger, shall we say, uh, a bigger pool of players to pick from. Uh, you, Who do you play each weekend? You know, what system you're going to play. You can only play a system if you have the personnel to play that system. If you haven't got it, then then if you try and play it, you fall down by the wayside. And I think we've seen a few of those in the last couple of weeks. Back in the Tommy Doherty era, we famously had Gordon Hill, yourself on one wing and Stevie Koppel on the other. It was one of the most exciting periods in our history. How important do you think it is to entertain the fans? Or is football now purely about winning? Well, it's it's very important that the right players are in the right club. Uh, we've seen 
for instance, the Arsenal squad, and everybody says, oh, Arsenal playing great, great. You've got the Liverpool team, great, great, great. I mean, they went, they went backwards for a few years, but then they come good. With, with, with United, that they've, they've, you've got to go backwards to come forwards from what we are at this moment. The doc would, would, would get us out there, and if we were injured, fine, you knew you couldn't play. But if he, if you was had any inclination on a Friday that you're gonna, that you, the, the boss is gonna play you, you was fit. You, go, it's that drive of the player that wants to be able to perform every week, every week. And the doc got that out of every single one of us. And we had young players. Big Steve Patterson came into the side. He came in and. There was room for these players to show us exactly what it was, but it kept us on our toes because there was somebody ready to take over your position. Nowadays, it's like they're all numbered and it's just a case of 49's off and 36 is on. And it's like, who's that? And then, but in that, and when I was playing, it was number 11. Oh, Hilly's been subbed. Um, no, no, number six. Brian going enough? Why is Brian being bought off? Is there something wrong? So it, it changes, and I think it's the the size of the squad that's really different now. But with the doc, I mean, he used to say to us when and and, and Tommy Cavana was fabulous, and Tommy used to come back and he says, "I want you." I, all he would say to me is, "Can you get me one today? That's all we need from you today is one. Two would be a bonus." You know, so in the back of my mind, I was upset when I never scored. But I still produce and create for Stewie and for good Jimmy. And, and Stevie would be exactly the same. And, and you'd go out with that thought, you know, and then you'd get, we don't mind them getting two as long as we get three. And I think that's football all the way through the system. But I look at it now and I think, wow, if they get one, they go on the defensive and they open the doors up to be beaten. And I saw that at the weekend. I saw that one goal goes in. It's like, uh oh, hands up in the air. Second goal, third goal, heads go down. We played Porto in the uh, Champions League over in Porto. We'd gone on a mission to Iran to play their national team as a club gesture, right, the week before. We were playing uh, Porto in Porto. We go there, we get absolutely demolished, 4-0. Why? Well, three or four days prior to that, John, we had to have injections because you, you had to... So we had these injections and they didn't affect us until we came back. So what happened is that we've gone there and three or four players are down with like flu-like symptoms, couldn't run very, oh, and it was awful. So, and, and we got battered. But then when they came back to Old Trafford, we, the crowd got behind us and we were four nil up within a certain amount of time. And it was like, it was like night and day, the game, night and day. The supporters were behind us. They wanted us to score. We get five goals. We're going, and Porto knew that they were well. And then they scrap a, 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 a goal towards the end, which counts as two, a double whammy. And that's what knocked us out. But I tell you what, the, the game that we played over there and the game, if we'd have played them on a normal, and that was the club playing testimonial games outside of the league. And we, and we suffered for it, but yeah, we, you, you, you go there and people knew that, that, that Docker and, and uh, uh, Trapattoni, the, the, the Juventus became the Italian manager, just turned around and said, I want two players on that, that that hill. I want two players on that hill. You give it one, he'll he'll go past you. So that's what we were doing as the team that was coming in from Europe. Number one, we came back from being in the second division. I know what it's like to play against them. 
I knew what it was like to play with them when the new players, when Stevie, uh, you got Stuart, and I went from Millwall to there with, and I was the winger. And it was like, wow, this is where I want to play. And then when you played against the European teams, it was lovely because you could feel the, the opposition were worried, were scared. And that was, and, and that, the, the, you know, to me, wingers, I mean, and there were so many good wingers around at that time for different clubs, Everton, Goodless, and, and then, you know, I mean, there was, you know, to me, every good team, John Robinson from Forest, and you'd get together, you know, on internationals, and you'd, you'd, you'd talk about, hey, you've got this, hey, you got him this weekend, not a bad defender, and you'd talk, say, yeah, but he doesn't like you going past him. So these things were here. You don't get it now, John. And, you know, you don't get it now. You get you get the new things. That, and I've watched the, the the everybody trying to take the game and the technology, try to in, invert something and say, well, okay, instead of just saying, well, he's a winger that cuts inside all the time. And they said, no, we'll call it an inverted winger. Yeah, please, please, you're making me laugh. And 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 you know and the, the the real diehard football supporters and people that know the game will just look at it and go, my God, what are they going to invent next? Gordon, as always, absolutely fascinating to hear you speak, especially from a man who all these decades later still has the passion and remembers the pride and the passion of playing for Manchester United. It's the thing that I think we miss with a lot of the players these days, and possibly that's because we have so many players who don't come from the home nations. I know that's one of your pet subjects, but thanks. Again, thanks for joining us and I look forward to having a chat again next time. Well, I would like to just say thank you and I'd like to say um, my commiserations and that for the loss of Bobby. Um, we've lost a few of those players in the last couple of months. We lost Franny a couple of weeks before that, Francis Lee. Um, we'll get, we're, we're saying goodbye to a lot, a lot of uh, great legend players from from when I played and players before me that I, I used to sit and listen to at, at, at dinners and it was just a pleasure to be part of it. And now listening to, you know, I don't listen to too many because there's not too many speakers now. And, uh, and it was just, I'd like, I'd just like to say to all the supporters, keep your chins up because as I said, it, 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 it will change, but be patient. Absolutely fantastic. Nice to end on a positive note. See you later, Gordon. See ya. Take care, everybody.